So hello everyone and welcome to the uh, second spa uh, Sets Nepal set space talk. In today's space talk sessions, uh, we have uh, Mr. Yuta Shimizu, who is the uh, president of Sets U Tokyo right now. And we also have Mr. Leo Wang, who is the vice president of Sets U Tokyo. We also have uh, Mr. Um, Takahito Moki, who is the founder of Sets Wasade. And first of all, uh, welcome, guys. Um, um, before starting the event, I would like to thoroughly uh, introduce you to the uh, audience here. Um, so starting with Yuta. Um, Yuta is a uh, first year master student at the Bear School of Systems Innovation at the Faculty of Engineering yes. in Utah. Uh, he's been working on image analysis of uh, high resolution image analysis of small objects, especially in um, space exploration mi uh, missions of JAXA, who is, which is the National Space Agency of Japan. Yes. And he has been the president of uh, Sets U Tokyo since April this year. And next we have uh, Mr. Dio Wang. Uh, he's, a, he's originally from Taiwan and he's a fourth year undergrad student at the International Program of Environmental Sciences at the College of Art and Science in Sets in University of Tokyo. And we also have Mr. Uh, Takahito Muki, who is the founding member of Sets Wasedi. Yes. So welcome everyone. And I guess we'll start with um, your presentations. Um, Yuta, you can start yeah. the presentation. Okay. And I give us a brief uh, introduction about yourself again. Oh, okay, I'm Yurishimis from the CSU Tokyo, Japan, and uh, um, as it said, but um, I'm the president of the CSU Tokyo, and so I've been like I've been joining this organization for about a year and a half, and uh, it's really cool. And today I'm really happy to meet you today. Okay. Uh, introduction about yourself. Okay. Oh, okay. I'm Yudasimis from. Is it okay? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. So can I start my a brief introduction about the U Tokyo using this presentation? So I share this. I think you can just start. Okay. So, um, hey, hey. Can you see this slide? So again, I will talk about the brief introductions for the Sets U Tokyo today. And um, so first of all, as you know, the Sets is the our student organization for the expression of, of the development of for space. And uh, it was established in 1980. And um, yeah, as you know, there are so many chapters in the world. And um, um, among the chapters, the Sets U Tokyo was established in 2016 as the first Japanese chapter. And uh, it is a non-profit organization for support of students to make an impact in space exploration. And, um, and in short, it is a community, com community for space lovers. And also um, here, the logos, of the Sets Iwaseda. It was founded on um, a bit after the foundation of the Sets U Tokyo. And it was founded by uh, the Moki, who is joining here today. And um, in creating these two Sets chapters, we call the Sets Japan. So these are the Sets Japan. And we have uh, currently, the four board members, uh, including me and Leo, he's a vice president, and uh, Yuzi, he's a secretary, and Moki, he's a member, board members of this Sets U Tokyo. And also, we have uh, other members who um, usually join some activities. And also, we have uh, many alumni, uh, including the founders of this organization, Daniel. And uh, yeah, and then we have so many members. And what is 
um, interesting is that our, 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 our measure is not originate only from the space engineering, like aerospace engineering, but some people's measures originate from the science part. So I'm currently working on the image analysis to um, uh, make clear the history of the um, small bodies and solar system bodies. So that's an um, interesting part in this Setsu Tokyo. And that's going to talk about uh, um, our annual activi activities in the Setsu Tokyo. The one is the lightning talk which is a casual and a freely talk about space. So we, um, we usually hold this kind of lightning talk. And in each event, um, some people have some, um, we talk about the everything that is related to space. So in, for example, this, in this time, uh, this was just after the arrival of the Jaxes on space exploration missions, which is high officer two mission. So we talked about the asteroids and the small bodies ex space explorations. And also we have joined um, contests, including the satellite design contest. And actually those pictures were the contests last year. And we uh, finally got our uh, two prizes is in the satellite design contest. So we had this kind of activity in this organization. And also we, as you know, we have international communities, including sets Nepal and the sets USA, USA and the sets UK. And so this picture shows that we have uh, such kind of international communities in the world. So those are the quick and brief interactions for sets U Tokyo. And uh, yes, it is the organization for everyone who has passionate in the space. And so we are waiting for you to join this organization. So we have the Twitter and the Facebook, and also we have the website. So you can check the latest information of our organization. And also we have the email address. So please contact us and join us. So thank you very much. That's all for uh, from us. So sorry, please unmute here. Are you? I can't hear you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, sorry guys, I, I was in. <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. um, so thank you for the presentation, Yuta. Um, yes, to show us what sets you Tokyo in a brief. And um, if anybody has any kind of questions about sets you Tokyo and the presentation that Yuta just showed us, um, you can ask us uh, on the Facebook chat, uh, which is live right now. Yeah, I and think we have one more presentation by Leo as well. Yeah, should I give it now? Yeah, you yeah. can. Okay, so I think I'll start. Okay. Um, Uta, I think you need to uh, cancel your share screen first. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Can it? Can you share the screen now? I'll try. Yeah, I think it's working. Yeah. Um, now we so talk can about. Can you see my screen now? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So now we will talk about uh, one of our activity more in detail, which is a satellite design contest. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. So I'll start. So. Self introduction first. I'm Leo Wang and I'm a fourth year undergraduate student in the University of Tokyo and I'm the vice president of SETSU Tokyo now. And so I'll talk about the satellite design contest, which is a main activity that our that SETSU Tokyo has been participating in. And I'll focus on the 2018 contest, which is last year. 
Yeah, so this is the outline of my presentation and I'll first give a brief introduction of what the satellite design contest is. And then I'll talk about our project last year, which was called the Tanabata mission. And also our experience in joining the 2018 contest. So what is the satellite design contest? It's a contest in Japan aimed for students, any kind of students from high school to grad school. And the contest can be done in English or Japanese. And it's also open to international contestants. And so during last year when we joined the competition, there was a team from Taiwan. And the contest is divided into three different sections, the design section, the idea section, and the junior section. The junior section is for high school students, and the design section and idea section are for university and graduate school students. And design section involves a more detailed design, like actually designing a satellite up to almost the level of being capable of being actually built and launched. While the idea section is like to a lower level of detail, which is slightly easier. So we've been joining the idea section. And actually in the past, many entries to this contest has actually been built and launched. And as you can see on the chart to the left, to the right, sorry, um, these are the organizers of this contest. And you can see these are all very professional organizations of engineers and scientists in Japan in fields related to space. And also here is JAXA, the Japanese Space Agency. So the experts in these organizations really help the contestants to improve their mission. And so that's why some of them can be actually built and launched. And now I'll start talking about our project last year. So the focus of our project is on space solar power which is a idea of generating power. Basically it's putting solar power plants in space instead of on the surface of earth and then generating solar power and then transmitting this power down to the earth for use. And as shown in this picture, which is a NASA concept diagram. And the benefit of space solar power over terrestrial based solar power is its reliability because Solar power on Earth is subjected to the day-night cycle of the Earth and also the weather effects like cloud cover. So it, the output is very unstable. As you can see in this picture, this is power generation in Germany over the time of a year. And the gray part is so non-renewables and wind and solar are like peaking in some times and decreasing other times. So it's generally very unreliable. So they still cannot be independent from non-renewable energy. So space solar power is a potential solution to this problem that can allow us to have actually reliable base low renewable power. But there are two significant challenges in the development of space solar power. The first one is in order to assemble those large um, power stations in orbit, you need to launch a lot of mass into orbit and currently launching things into orbit is very expensive. And this problem is currently being solved by reusable rockets. As you can see in the picture to the right, that is the SpaceX Starship, which may be able to greatly reduce the cost of launching rockets. And the second challenge to space solar power is that wireless power transmission hasn't been tested in space yet but it's a crucial technology in order to use space solar power. So this is the focus of our mission. So this is our satellite design. And our satellite is a 27U CubeSat, which is the largest size allowed for a CubeSat. And so what we intend to do is to be a small scale demonstrator for, for wireless power transmission to test the technology in space for the first time. And so our satellite has a 27U satellite bus containing the thrusters and like batteries and control systems, like those basic components. And then there are two deployable side panels. And on one side of the panel is solar array for generating power. And on the other side is microwave transceivers for both transmitting and receiving microwave for 
testing the wireless power transmission by microwave. And we also have antennas for communication between satellites for aligning the two satellites for, yeah, I forgot to mention that we're, we, we plan to launch two satellites at once in order to test the tr power transmission between these two satellites. So we have communication between satellites and also antenna for communication with Earth to send commands to the satellite and downlink the experimental data. And we intend to observe the, the effect of high power microwave transmission on the Earth's um, ionospheric particles. So we have some sensors to detect the changes in our atmospheric properties. And yeah, that's it for this side. And this is the operating procedure. We plan to launch two identical cube sets and we named them Olihime and Hikoboshi. This is based on a Japanese mythological story. And that's why the mission is called Tanabata mission. And once these two satellites are launched into orbit, we plan to launch them at secondary payload, probably on a rocket bound for the ISS because the launch opportunity is very frequent. And after deployment from the launch vehicles, the satellites will open their side panels and face their solar panel toward the sun and start charging. And once the batteries are fully charged, the satellites can start conducting the wireless power transmission experiment. So they'll face each other and transmit power between the two satellites and observe the, like the efficiency and effects on the ionosphere. And after the experiment, data can be downlinked to the Earth. Now I'll talk about our experience in the contest. So this is a general schedule of the contest. Basically, there are two stages. During the first stage, we write documents, basically a proposal on our design of the satellite. And then we submit these documents to, to the organizers. And the judges will first review these written documents and then select a few entries for the final review. And once we're selected by the final review, we need to prepare some more detailed materials like answering a Q&A form from the judges and making a one-to-one -one scale model of our satellite, a physical model, and also prepare for the final presentation. And the final review is done as a oral presentation. So this is our initial submission so in the first stage, we need to submit two documents, one three-page mission overview and another seven-page mission analysis. And the picture shown here is the first page of our mission analysis. And this picture is our first meeting. You can see our five group members. And I'm here, and this one is Moki. And after the announcement of the results for the first stage, we got selected for the final review. So we started preparing the additional materials. And so you can see we made a one-to-one a -one scale model of our satellite, which is here. And you can see the chair for scales, so you know about approximately how big it is. And we made the model together at JAXA. And we also designed this mission logo and the document on the right is the Q&A form from the judges, which we try to clarify some points that the judges have with our written proposal. And so after preparing all of these, we also made presentation slides and then prepare for the final presentation. So this is the final review it held. It was held in Kulume, Fukuoka. And here is a map. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, so Kurume is in the southwestern part of Japan. So we took a plane from Tokyo to that place for the presentation. And so this is a picture of the presentation. So yeah, and in the present presentation, and we got two awards from the organizers. From this is I think the Japanese space and a aeronautical science society or something or and the the institute of electrical um, information and communications engineers so these two organizations chose our our project as kind of their favorite in this 
in, the, in this contest and gave us their awards. So this is the awarding ceremony. And there was also a model session where we show our models to other participants and also the judges and we talk about the mission. And this is a picture of our team members at the presentation with our awards. And after the 2018 Satellite Design comp Competition, and we held a presentation aimed toward set members in a set Japan lining talk, which is shown in this picture. And we were, because we got the award from the IEICE, so we also got invited to the IEICE's annual conference to present our project to the engineers. And it's shown in this picture. And also there's a possibility that we can further develop the project and maybe if we can get support, maybe we can work toward actually launching it, but currently it's just a possibility and we're not sure about it. And other than the 2018 contest, we also continue to join the 2019 satellite contest and we have already passed the initial review and we're currently preparing for our final review, which will be held in November. Yeah, I think that's all for the Satellite Design Contest presentation. Thank you. Um, I can't hear you. I think you need to turn on your mic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, thank you, Leo, for your presentation. And if you guys have any kind of um, questions, you can ask us the questions in the Facebook Live. Um, I guess we are done with the presentations. Um, both Leo and Yuta have given their presentations. Uh, thank you guys for your presentations. It was really insightful. And I also personally did enjoy both of them. Um, moving on yeah. to the question section. Um, now we have uh, collected some questions beforehand. Uh, we'll uh, start this uh, program by taking those questions. Um, so could we start the questions, Yuta and Leo? Are you guys ready? Yeah, yeah. yeah, we're ready. Okay, so the first question we have is, how do you guys collect funding to run uh, Sets you Tokyo? How are you collecting funds to run the organization? So um, basically we don't, uh, obtain any money from the members, and uh, so for this organization, what it is, what is needed is just the passion for the space. And as I as I said in the presentation, we basically um, hold a lightning talk event, which is a casual talk about the space. And also, we uh, recently have the satellite design content, but they don't have any. So we basically don't uh, get any money. Uh, it is of course that uh, sometimes we uh, get some money by uh, joining some um, outreach event or something, but basically we don't get any money for this organization. Okay. Um, yep. um, so the next question we have is, what are some of the annual act activities that sets Nepal organ it sets Japan organizes? Sorry? <laughs> um, what are some annual activities that sets Japan organizes? Annual, annual, annual activities. Yeah. So, what do you think about it, Leo? I think uh, the annual activities that like uh, that lightning talk and the uh, special event for new students and uh, also just working hard for the satellite design contest. I think what other? You know, like, um, I think we can consider the satellite design contest as kind of our main annual events now because we're joining regularly every year and we're spending a large portion of the year focusing on this contest. And and then after the satellite design contest, we also hold other kinds of events like lightning talks or workshops if we have time. Yes. Uh, thank you for the answer, Lita and Leo. Um, moving on to the next question, we have um, the question is, 
would you prefer the constellation of small satellites or a big constellation of huge resolution imagery and why? <laughs> it's a bit <laughs> difficult question because uh, basically, for my opinion, um, I prefer using the big satellite for getting high resolution imagery because um, the sensors and also the transmission speed is uh, really depends on the how lures and how volume and how power, power uh, capacity uh, the satellite has. So basically I prefer using the big satellite for getting high resolution images. But thinking about the cost, uh, recently we used uh, such kind of a concentration of small satellites. So I think the the answer depends on the what the priority is. So um, focusing only on the resolution, I think uh, using a big satellite is a better answer. Okay. Um, thank you for the answer. Um, Moving on to the next question, uh, we have the question, and the question is that since Nepal has no space testing laboratories and facilities yet, how would you suggest one to start with space related projects in such a scenario? <laughs> it's a difficult question. Um, do you have any answers to the <laughs> uh Hi. Yes. Hello, guys. Welcome back. I'm um, sorry for a bit of a technical difficulty. Uh, we'll start the um, talk again. So let's yes. resume from the question where the live session was interrupted. Um, so the question was, since Nepal has no space testing laboratories and facilities yet, how would you suggest one uh, to start with space related projects in such a scenario? Okay, so I'll start answering your question. So actually, I think the satellite design contest is a very good project if you're willing to come to Japan for the the final review. Yeah, because like we're joining the satellite design contest, we also don't have any like laboratories or like any other infrastructures to use. But the satellite design contest is totally only like paper based. You just need to write a proposal. You don't need to do any actual experiments or build anything other than the very simple scale model. So, yeah, it's oh. basically you don't need anything other than internet to do the project. So, I think the only thing that may be difficult for you is that, like, if you get selected into the Final round, you will need to come to Japan for the presentation. But <laughs> other than that, the satellite design contest is very easy to do. Okay, so, yeah, that can be a uh, thing that you know people in Nepal can do because we also don't have clean rooms, and uh, making satellites requires clean rooms. So yeah, um, that can be a very viable way to start. Uh, so the next question is, uh, how is planetary data from one coordinate, one coordinate system being converted to another? Uh, it is, is this talking about the, like, uh, planetary data from the space probes? Yes, it is. Um, I think uh, the answer is that uh, basically we use some software which is shared in the um, space exploration group, for example, in JAXA, which is a Japanese space agency, or the NASA, or the JPL. So, and um, the uh, transformation of the data is um, usually complicated and uh, time consuming. So we usually use some um, uh, useful software. Okay. Uh, the next question is uh, How is uh, data proved by high visa to being processed right now? Um, so, 
So um, Babel helps to have gotten a variety, so so many varieties of data, including on uh, images and uh, spectrum and the data from the spectra spect spectroscopy, and also hmm? spectrum, and also um, like uh, 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 like a te telemetries. That kind of thing. So, um, talking about the uh, images, first of all, have Satu got the images and uh, and process the compress the file sizes in order to send to the ground, and then they use a high gain antenna or the low gain antenna to send it to the ground, and after the mem. Um, members got the images they um make the actual images from the binary data by using the some uh, fancy like a uh, software and finally we got the actual image which is like uh, we always see in the website or the twitter or the like the papers so make I think that's the ordinal way to process the data from high emphasis spacecraft, mainly for the images. Uh, so the next question is again related to Hayabusa. Um, so what is the kind of imaging techniques that were used to capture the scientific uh, image uh, of the high resolution image of the uh, sites of the Hayabusa mission? Um, so I guess this is talking mostly about what kinds of maneuvers were used or you know what kinds of imaging techniques were implemented uh, so basically we use uh, many kinds of image analysis which is like uh, for example the which is our ordinal, ordinal image uh, converting like uh, we can use it in uh, um, Lightroom or the Photoshop that's in such kind of uh, softwares, and also we um, analyze the each images in very details, and we, for example, trace the profile of the rocks, which is a which is called borders, or the we trace the profile of the craters, and then we see the distribution of the sizes of the rocks and the craters. And also by using the images, by using a stereo, stereo pairs, we can make a 3, 3D models of the planet itself. So maybe those are the uh, ordinary way to we use for the image analysis in the high observer uh, to mission. Okay. Um, thank you for the answer. And the next question is, what new Zaxa missions are you guys working on and what new missions are you trying to do uh, also in Sets Nepal, uh, also in Sets Japan? So, yeah. <laughs> so for me, um, I'm a country working on the resources of the, the related to the JAXA's next mission, which is a Martian Moon's Express mission. Uh, which will be which is planned to be held in 2024 and will explore the one of the Martian moon Phobos so maybe I will uh, I will work for that uh, JAXA's next mission and after that I don't have any plans so I'm not sure about about it and uh, Leo, do you have some plans to work in for the Jaxus missions? Um, I'm not actually <laughs> in that field yet, so I think I have no answer for this question now, but I do intend to to do something related to space in the future. Yeah. I think Leo was really uh, informative about the satellite design contest. Um, we talk a bit about this then. Also, because it is one of your major events. Yes, yes. Um, so, how did you guys uh, started doing this competition, and how were the first steps? Um, so, you want to okay. answer? Go ahead. Go ahead. 
Yeah, so our participation in this contest was actually started by another member who is currently doing research on rocket engines. And I, I did, I actually, I don't know how he found out about this contest, but he just advertised in our ZSU Tokyo group recruiting members for the competition and then I joined. So that's how we started joining this satellite design contest. And also, yeah. and also in the beginning of thinking about a miss, new mission, we, um, search, we read so many papers and uh, we try to find uh, some hot topics in, the, in this uh, region, including uh, space uh, engineering and also the planetary sciences. So maybe the first step is to read uh, as many papers as possible. Um, so yeah, thank you for the answer, uh, guys. And um, we have, we just have obtained the question and the life. Uh, the question is from uh, Pradeep today, who is the uh, president of SETEPA. Uh, and the question is, do you uh, guys have any kinds of astronomy related events in Set uh, Japan, like stargazing events and or outreach events like that? Do you guys conduct any of those events? Oh, that's cool, but we don't have any that kind of event. <laughs> and uh, yeah, th that's a <laughs> great opportunity to work with, uh, with everyone, but we don't have any kind of activities. Is it right, Rio? <laughs> yeah, I think maybe like being in Tokyo makes like stargazing events kind of difficult because we're in a very big city and there's <laughs> light pollution. That's true. Yeah, the light pollution in Tokyo is pretty miserable. Okay. Yeah. Is it possible to see uh, get, uh, like uh, stars in Nepal? Yeah, it is. Um, Nepal yeah. is quite light polluted, but we do have a lot of stars. Oh, great. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I was actually curious about uh, your uh, lightning talks. Um, what are they actually about and you know, how did you guys plan that? That seems to be a pretty interesting event. Um, it's really casual. So first of all, we uh, decide who we talk in that event, and uh, the person who we talk in the event will search for the topics that uh, that is, re for example, related to his or her research or the recent space news, like uh, the new launch of the rocket in Japan or the, in the US. And then they, um, he, uh, he or she will um, prepare for the presentation like 10 minutes, Leo? Mm, it's usually like maybe yeah. minutes, 10 minutes. Yeah, like, yeah. Very, very short. Yeah, a very short presentation and uh, um, they will, so he will talk about it, and um, other members will um, give some questions or comments, like this event. And uh, that event is very casual and free talk event, and it will be about one hour or so. And yeah, it's really good. Coming back to our... Uh topic we um, just had a talk about before. Uh, so have you guys done any kind of stargazing before, uh, personally? Mm, not really. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> I personally um, have seen the stargazing in the different prefecture, different part of Japan, which is a uh, northern part of Japan. Uh, yeah. And uh, there are not so, there are, that city is not so uh, urbanized. So we can see many stars and we, and I was able to see the stargazing part. In Tokyo, it's really um, impos impossible to see that kind of event. Like you guys don't, uh, 
how bad is the light pollution over there in Tokyo? Mm, basically, you can see only a few planets, I think. Yeah, like the planets are usually visible, but for the stars, you usually can see them. Um, actually, our question is that how far is uh, one of the you know least light polluted areas from Tokyo, from where you guys are staying at? How far? How far? Like, how much do you need to drive or travel to get to a place where you can actually do some kind of stargazing? Um. It's almost like, uh, it's uh, more than uh, uh, just like 100 to, to 100 and a half kilometers, like uh, 40 minutes from here. So it's not so far away. Yeah. And some friends and some of my friends are usually go to that kind of place and See the stargazing, yeah. So I would actually like to, uh, you know, suggest you both to visit Nepal in uh, the year 2020. Like we also have the year visit Nepal 2020. Um, so you guys can visit Nepal and <laughs> do a stargazing event because uh, it's just like 40 to 50 kilometers in the proximity of Kathmandu, and we can have um, pretty clear skies, and we can also you know, get some good scopes there and have a good night. Right. <laughs> also, Sounds great. You guys, can, you guys can really visit Nepal next year. <laughs> I've never been to your places before, so how would I, I want to. <laughs> so again, it's um, a pretty big uh, year for Nepal next year. It's called the Visit Nepal Year 2020. <laughs> okay. You guys can try it. <laughs> Um, so more on the questions of the satellite again. Um, how are you guys actually planning to uh, use the um, transmission of energy between satellites? How, how is the idea actually working? Um, do you mean how we're we're going to test the technology? Yeah. Exactly. Or. Um, basically, like in the in the actual. Um, space solar power generation for like for commercial use, the transmission will be between geostationary orbit and the surface of the Earth. But it will require a very big antenna and to transmit a very high power, so that's the like the the beam doesn't get dispersed before it reaches the the target. But for a smaller demonstration mission, we cannot generate that kind of high power, so we have to decrease the distance of transmission. So that's why instead of testing the transmission between a satellite and the Earth, we're testing it between two satellites. So we can control the distance and we plan to vary the distance between maybe like one meter and like maybe a few hundred meters. And and then do repeated transmission and then use the onboard sensors to observe the effect on the ionosphere and also the receiving satellite can also determine the amount of power received, which is which means the efficiency. So, how how efficient do you think this system is going to be, or you know, um, how efficient do you think the systems are? Um, actually, at shorter distances, it can be quite efficient because I remember there's kind of the transmission of of the microwave. Its behavior has like kind of two different sections. Like the the nearer section is called, I think the the um what was it called? Uh, it's like close near field, I think. And in the <laughs> near field, the the microwave beam doesn't get dispersed much, so the efficiency is very high. But once you left the the near field and enter the far field. It, the dispersion gets increased a lot and then efficiency drops. So if you can keep the transmission within the near field, then the efficiency can be very high. So uh, I guess we are on the final times of our program here. And um, as a final note, um, I would like to request Yuta and 
video to um, give us some messages for students in Nepal who are interested in astronomy or astrophysics or you know engineering and math. Um, what would you like to convey to them? So, um, first of all, I'm really happy and really thank you to having this kind of event today. And uh, all the, I'm really happy to, in the, all over the world, we have so many space lovers. So we would like to have this kind of event more. And also about the sets you Tokyo. So when you guys come to Japan, please contact us and we will, um, uh, currently have the, the lightning talk at least once in a month. So if you contact us, you can join, you can freely join this event and you can share your passion about space with us. So, and that will be a great opportunity for both you and both for both us. So please contact us and yeah, that's a comment from me. So Leo, do you have something? Um, I also think it's a good idea for us to have more interactions in the future. Yeah, yes. Yeah, and maybe uh, if, if possible, you can consider joining the SETA design contest. Okay, so, um, yeah, I guess we will look forward to joining the satellite design contest. And thank you, Leo and Yuta, for the time. It was really amazing having you here. And I guess you gave some pretty insightful answers to the questions we have. So on a final note, again, I would like to tell you guys that Nepal is having the Visit Nepal Year 2020 next year. <laughs> so if you guys are free from college, you can you know come over and visit, and we'll be more than happy to visit you. Uh, we'll be more than happy to host you guys here. <laughs> Maybe we'll do some trekkings and have some stargazing events. <laughs> so as a final note, that's <laughs> Visit Nepal 2020. Wow. <laughs> And I request you guys to come to Nepal Good next luck. year. <laughs> okay, I keep in mind. And I really, think, really thank you for all our members of the Sadness Paul having this kind of event today. Yeah. Thank you for your time, Liu and Nestro. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Utah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Here's the smaller version of your uh, satellite. Oh, great. <laughs> Cube set. <laughs> you guys are using a 27. <laughs> so, yeah, guys, thank you for uh, all your time. And I guess we should wrap the event right now. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you very much. <laughs> ended the okay, cool. Yeah, we have ended the video. <laughs> yeah, sort of. The recording is over, Huh? Recording is over.